Well, welcome to MCU Wars. We're here at DevCon by Renesis, and I'm Cody Miller with EE Web. Today, we're meeting with Richard Berry, expert in real-time systems. Richard is the author and founder of Free RTOS, a real-time kernel that's had over 170,000 downloads in the last two years. We're also here with John Lavos, founder, president, and CEO of Micrium, leader in RTOS and middleware components. John's also well known for the author of the Micro C OS series of books. Welcome. Glad you're both here. We'd like to first define a few things for our viewers. Um, we'd like to start by defining the difference between an RTOS and a kernel. And John, if you don't mind starting. Absolutely. Uh, we like to define the difference between an RTOS and a kernel. A kernel is really the multitasking portion of a real-time operating system. And an operating system, a real-time operating system, contains more than just the, RTO, the kernel. It's a TCP IP stack, file system, GUI, uh, USB stack, USB host, USB device. So for us, an RTOS is not just a kernel, unlike what the popular uh, belief is in the industry. So RTOS for us is really more than just a kernel. Okay. Do you have anything else to add there? You know, like to... uh, no, not really. I think that covers it. Um, I, I class my product as um, an executive. It has a a kernel and a scheduler and some um, communications primitives around it. Um, but uh, as John says, it's, it's not a full RTOS, even though it's often described as an RTOS, really it's a kernel or a scheduler. Okay, okay great. Um, so why would a user want a kernel in their product? Richard, what would you suggest as a reason? Well, um, firstly I would say that um, even, even though I provide uh, an RTOS or a kernel, um, I wouldn't say that everybody should always use one in their product. It's very much a matter of the right tools for the right application. Um, as soon as you get into any kind of complexity, complexity in timing, communications, interfaces, um, you want something which is going to be maintainable over a long period of time, something which is robust. You, you want the heart of your application to be using something um, which is controlling the execution which you know to be uh, secure and robust, then um, really there becomes a point where it's easier to use a kernel than, than not to use a kernel. Um, you know, communication interfaces are, are really the point at which, or multiple interfaces are really at the point at which the complexity gets big enough to warrant using a kernel and make your life easier to use it than not to use it. John? Anything else to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, basically an RTOS provides a framework for building upon applications. So instead of being boxed into uh, certain things that you can or can't do, it, it becomes very interesting to have a kernel, especially when you're considering, like Richard was saying, uh, TCP IP, file system, GUI, all these applications require a lot of CPU, uh, CPU processing time, and you wouldn't want to have a single threaded application handle those specific mm -hmm. modules. So, uh, an RTOS kernel, a uh, kernel per se, is a good foundation to build your application on. I, th I think one of, one of the key, key points for me is actually maintainability. You can write any application without an RTOS, but as soon as you add in extra functionality or change the hardware platform you're running on, change the optimization layer, uh, level on a compiler, you don't want your application to behave differently. Um, so, really, maintainability to me is everything in software development, and that's the kernel really helps with that. Okay, well, great. I, I know both of you offer your source code to your users. Can you uh, give us a few reasons why that's valuable to an end user? Um, John, come on. Yeah, basically we provide our software. I mean, we don't use the word open source because in the industry, open source is viewed as uh, free, free software that you, know, you use freely in your application. In our case, our software is offered in source form for free evaluation, but we expect customers to license our product once they decide to use it in a commercial setting. Um, so we provide software in source form because it makes it a lot easier for customers to actually tailor the software if they need to for their application. 
it's a lot easier to work with different compilers, a lot easier to work with different environments, different processors. So having the software in source form is a huge advantage to, to customers. And they see the quality of the software. It's not like you're hiding uh, behind the object code that's very important. We put a, a tremendous amount of pride in creating the best, best looking software you could put your eyeballs on. Um, Richard, I know you also provide it, and maybe you can explain some of the reasons as well as why don't you um, continue elaborating on um, what open source is. I know you are open source. Well, uh, firstly, I, I, I agree with Jean that having the source code is, is very important. There are, there are people that say, you, if you want to support a product, you can only uh, give it to people in binary form because as soon as they start changing it, then um, you know, it becomes unsupportable. And, and that's absolutely right. If people do change it, then we can't support them. So they can, um, they can change it if they want, but then um, you know, there's, there's limited in what people like Jean and I can do to help them from that point. Um, counter to that, uh, I think, um, uh, again, just to really emphasize what, uh, what Jean has said, um, when you have the source code, um, you can see how things are working. It's much easier to debug. You can step through the code. If you think there's something wrong, you can see exactly what the code's doing, whether it's doing what you expect it to do or um, whether it's doing the right thing but not what you expect it to do, all those sorts of things. It just makes life so much easier. Um, my personal product is um, what I call moderated open source. It's not um, open source in the traditional sense. It is a free product. Um, you can download it in source form. And once you've downloaded it, it is effectively open source to you. So you can modify it, distribute it. You can even sell it if you want to. Um, <coughs> the, the reason it differs from traditional open source is that um, the way we have developed the whole product is to try and remove all the objections people have to using open source. Uh, one of the major objections is that there's ambiguity in IP ownership. You don't want to build something into a product that sells millions uh, of units and then find you have a problem because you've accidentally put someone else's IP in. So when people contribute back to free Artos, all that code is kept. It's, it's made completely available for free to everybody, but it's kept separate from the core product. So the core product, we know where everything came from.